In today's video, we're gonna talk about why it's imperative to have an organized, decluttered classroom to maximize learning. We will also talk about hacks, organizational hacks, that will help you to have a very organized classroom. My name is Rosanna Hernandez and I have been in education for the past 13 years going on my 14th year. I started as a clerical employee in the public school system and I became a math teacher in the classroom at a high school level and I taught GED at the adult school level. I am currently serving as an assistant principal. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, what I do is I always like to share a fun fact about me. I share one in the beginning of each video and I share one at the end of the video. So the fun fact for the beginning of the video today is that I am actually a lefty. I do everything with my left hand except writing. My parents taught me to write with the right hand when I was young, and so I tend to write with my right hand when I'm writing. Otherwise, everything else is done with the left. And if you're also a lefty, if you can comment on that and down below, I would love it because I love to hear what other people have to say and how many people watch my videos that happen to have the same facts as me. Years ago, I researched why it was important to have an organized classroom. To my great surprise, I found out that it does make a difference. Number one, it helps with behavior issues in the classroom. It could save you time because you wouldn't be going around looking to find things that you'll easily find if you did have an organized classroom. And it can also improve your teaching. If your teaching improves, learning improves. Oftentimes when students go into a classroom and they see that things are in a disarray, there's clutter and there's really no systems in place, then they tend to make their own. The reason why teaching and learning is optimized in an organized classroom is because there are no distractions. When I was a classroom teacher, I remember there was one time I had some lessons like cutouts that I was gonna use and I knew I had them. I had them in a box and they were somewhere in the closet. But because I hadn't labeled the box and I hadn't put them in like some kind of an arrangement, like maybe an alphabetized system, it took me 20 minutes to look and look and then finally I found it, but I just wasted so much time. And I just distinctly remember I wasted so much time looking for those, those that one lesson, those cutouts. So I think that was one of the things that prompted me to make sure that I organized the room to make, so that way I'm not wasting time looking for things that are easily found. So now that I've made the case for having an organized classroom, why it's so important, I think it's time that I delve into some of the hacks, some of the things that helped me as a teacher and that I've looked into, that I've researched what teachers are saying is helping them stay organized in their classrooms. You might not think of the first one as an organizational hack, but it is. Having a system outside of the classroom for students to know how they need to enter the room. It's important for the students to know during the transitional phases, where are they supposed to be outside of the classroom, in the hallways, where are they supposed to line up? So having that system is the first organizational hack. So if you notice, it starts from even outside of classroom environment. One of the best things that worked for me as a classroom teacher was I had this cabinet right by the door. So as I greeted the students one by one and they would come in, I had the homework assignment, the classwork assignment, whatever handouts I had for them for the day was right there for them to pick up. I've seen this in several classrooms where teachers have bins, and this is actually the third strategy. They have a bin for collecting work. Some have one separate bin for classwork, and they do for homework, and they do for all other things like the exit tickets. They're actually great strategies to use. I personally didn't do that. What I did was I had a time set when I would collect the homework. Right after the warm-ups, I would say, okay, you guys, if you did your homework, give it to me. I would pick them up, put a paper clip, and I would put it in my box. I had one of those rolling carts to take along with me. One of the best strategies also that I actually learned from other teachers, veteran teachers when I was new, was having each desk not only be cleaned, but have some kind of a supply box on it. So what I did was Ziploc bags. I had Ziploc bags at each desk and they were numbered 
and each one had a marker, had something to clean with, had a highlighter, a pencil. What was nice about that was students did not say, oh, I don't have a ruler. Oh, I don't have a pencil today. It's like everything that they needed was there. As a math teacher, there were times when I had to use protractors. So before, like the day before, I went ahead and put protractors in everybody's bag. If you remember, I mentioned how I used to have, uh, I, there was that one time when I spent 20 minutes looking for uh, these cutouts that I needed for my lesson, which I knew that I had used a year before. My suggestions, my hacks for you, is to make sure that those items that you know you use year after year are placed in some kind of a box, some kind of a container, are labeled, put in alphabetic order. Because I'm telling you, from my own mistakes, it was so difficult. I had a lot of hands-on things that I used in my classroom because it was so engaging for the kids. It was like they were doing practice problems but were having fun at the same time. But after a while, you know, it's like 180 some days of teaching, it was hard to go and figure out where I put them. So that was my mistake and that's why I'm making it a hack, an organizational hack. I'm suggesting putting them in a container, labeling and quite possibly putting them in some kind of an alphabetic order. Another super excellent strategy, file cabinets. Every classroom I've basically been in has some kind of a wooden or metallic file cabinet. It's great because you can put a lot of supplies in and have it be nice and organized and some teachers even lock it up depending on what they have in there. But the right thing to do would probably be to go through once a quarter and clean it out because going through once a quarter, if possible once every two months, would be an awesome strategy to make sure it's clean. It's kind of like our pantry in the kitchen. It's again one of those things that needs to be looked at because we put spices in front and behind and it gets pretty messy in there. It's all over the place. So just like cleaning a pantry, it's a good idea to clean those cabinets, to put in our planners once every two, three months to go and actually make it happen. Next hack, teacher desk. I've seen piles and piles of work on teacher desks and it always makes me wonder. I go, is that like work that they're supposed to grade because it's always there? Why is it there? So believe it or not, there are studies on this that having like a lot of clutters on, on and around us is actually doing things, causing some tension, causing stress, causing even anxiety. If it's a pile that's been sitting there, chances are you don't need it. That's why it's been sitting there untouched. The best thing to do is to throw it away. Find it in yourself to throw that stuff away. Or if not, I have another strategy. Why don't you scan them and save them on the computer? It takes so much less space. I've actually done that before. Uh, you can even get a secretary to help you because sometimes they have access to the big Xerox machines and those things can scan a lot of pages. You're talking 60, 70 pages in like seconds. So they can do that and then they can email it to you or they could save it on a flash drive and then you bring it and you save it however you want. Next strategy, visiting other teachers' classrooms. When you go and visit and you see that there's a teacher doing something that's working for them, they're getting good results and they have an organized class, it's okay to steal their ideas. In fact, a lot of times I find that they kind of think that it's a good thing and they see it as, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit rewarding to them to see that their fellow teachers are learning from them and acquiring their styles. The walls, the boards, should also be super well organized. So I know a lot of teachers do this and it's such an awesome strategy. They divide up the board into sections. One section might have the date. One section might have the homework. Another might have the classwork. However, you could divide it so that when the students come in, they know where to look for what. I've seen avid classrooms write essential questions. Others have the standards shown. The only thing about that is sometimes teachers do it because it's like a requirement. When the administrators go in, they want to see the standards, they want to see the agenda, they want to see the homework, but they don't update it and that defeats the purpose. You have to be able to arrive on time each day and make sure that the wall is the wall or the board is updated because it's not supposed to be for administration. It's supposed to be for you to track exactly what you're doing 
and more importantly for the students. You're teaching them organizational skills so that they know they could follow along what you're doing in the agenda and if they want to know what the homework is for the day, it's right there. They could just write it down. I'm going to throw in one more strategy that worked for me. My lessons were always on PowerPoint presentations and I had them saved. I had them on a USB drive. It was so nice because the next year, if I happen to teach the same topic, let's say I was going to teach I am three again, all I had to do was follow. It was going to be off by like a day, you know, but overall, like by unit, I had all my days organized. Each PowerPoint for the day was organized by the name, which was the date I used it on. And it was so nice. I could make minor adjustments year after year, but in the long run, the lesson was the lesson. That way I didn't have to recreate because I've seen teachers every time they have to recreate new because they have, tend to throw away what they had before. That didn't happen with me. It was so efficient to have my lesson on a PowerPoint from the year before that I could use over again the following year, except obviously tweak the day. And then of course there's some days when there's assemblies and drills and such. That's okay. I made the adjustments necessary. If you notice, I talk a lot about organization and efficiency, saving time, having good time management. And that's what I do on efficiencyandorganization.com. I created that website because I have found that over the course of my life, I've been able to achieve a lot, especially as an, as an adult, because of my development of organization skills, time saving skills, and goal setting skills. So I discuss those on my website. In fact, I have them like in focus areas. I have personal finance, personal life, uh, small business, education, academic. So each one has a, fo there's focus areas, but each one talks about efficiency and organization in it. I would strongly encourage you to visit the site. I have the link down below. What will happen is once a month, I send out like an informational guide, kind of like a newsletter. And that way you can see what information I share there. Another very important thing I want to tell you when you're on the website, there's actually uh, the blog for this. What I'm talking about in this video is there. If you go under the educator section, you'll find the blog, you'll find the information. And there I have more hacks than what I was able to mention in this video. Before I share my last fun fact for this video, I want to also encourage you to subscribe to this channel. I, everything I talk about is about systems. It's about routines, about having organization, efficiency, basically better time management, because that way you can also achieve a lot, get a lot out of life by just having those skills. I actually somehow tend to manage to pull in 20 miles of fast walking on the treadmill. I spread it out over the course of seven days, but I do manage to get that in there because I just think being healthy and being fit, especially on a busy schedule, is super important. And I actually am going to do a video that's going to be coming up on that, on how to be more healthy, more fit, and how to be able to do exercise on a busy schedule. If you're also a fast walker, if you also use a treadmill, if you're a runner, I'd love to know about it. If you could comment, uh, I would appreciate that. I love connecting with people that I have things in common with. If you're a teacher and if any of the things I mentioned to you, the organizational hacks uh, resonated, please also comment. That way I could see and learn from you. Have a great day and I will catch you in the next video.